Welcome to America's Heroes Group. Welcome back, folks, to America's Heroes Group Roundtable with our partner, veteran legislative voice. And today is um, February 12th, uh, 2022. And, of course, February is Black History Month and American Heart Month. Our host is none other than the governor of Talk Radio, Cliff Kelly. I'm the co-host, Ernesto Borges. Our executive producer is Glenda Smith. And our digital media producer is Ivan Ortega of Scouts Honor Productions. And we've got a uh, guest today. Uh, her name is uh, Stephanie Colota. I hope I pronounced that correctly. She is a United States Army Reserve Sergeant, first class uh, veteran, and a founder and creator of Veteran Legislative Voice. Now, our topic, of course, is, is, as I said, it's about U.S. service members who are turning down assignments due to racism. Turning down assignments due to racism. People are serving across who describe very negative experiences that they've had uh, while in the service. And they run into a bit of racism. So we're going to talk about that today. Uh, a survey has indicated that that's happening. Uh, in various places uh, in, in the in the country, certainly in, in our country and in, in various parts of the country. But anyway, um, welcome, uh, Stephanie. Stephanie Colotta. Hi. Is it? Um, Hi. It's Colotta, like pina coladas. Colotta. <laughs> Colotta. Okay, I can remember yeah. that. Uh, okay. Well, welcome. You're uh, Sergeant First Class. I, I see in the Army Reserve. Yes. So tell yes, us. Re- uh, you, you did what now? Uh, yes, I'm a retired uh, Army Reserve veteran, started first class, retired in 2019. Oh, good, good. Well, thank you for your service. Um, I, uh, you know, this this racism, uh, obviously, it's it's pervasive. It's uh, throughout our country, and it certainly um, pervades and, and invades our military also. So uh, I understand that there's some soldiers and, I guess, other branches of the service, Marines, uh Navy guys, Air Force, that are running into racism uh, and they are turning down assignments. Is that correct? Yes. So Syracuse University um, had partnered up. They they have an institute for veterans and military families. They partnered up with Blue Star Families Mm -hmm. and they created a uh, survey. And then when they surveyed, they were particularly looking for minority. Would you explain the Blue Star? families yes it's one of those family programs like gold star blue star Mm -hmm. um uh gosh of course right now my my mind is escaping me with blue star i believe that's for the service members that have been deployed and gold star are for the service members that had died in combat Mm -hmm. and then so there's these organizations that partner up together and for understand uh so that they can really as a community stand up and uh make change and for this survey, the, the survey created actually almost 190 pages hmm. uh, in length. And so they cover because they look for actually look for minority families, uh, service members and families and to survey pretty much everything for how they're treated in the service, how the families are treated in the service, how different things, um, the experiences that they have. And they look for positive and negatives. And yes, the, the most um, popular issue that came out of this survey is that service members and their families do turn down uh, duty assignments where they are afraid of possible racism in the community or in, you know, in the service themselves in that location. Personally, I know actually a few families and they were um, African American or they were mixed, a white uh, wife and spouse and then a black service member. Mm -hmm. And they have turn down assignments to locations that even gave them promotions, basically a higher response, higher responsibility um, that would actually help their career. But they were in locations like Birmingham, Alabama, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I think there was another location, Ohio, which kind of surprises some people, mm-hmm. but yes, they, they actually was uh, some issues there in Ohio. Sure. And so Let that, me- that's one of the things that had really came out. Are these people who are getting at that new location and then they run into problems or people are saying, look, I'm not going to, you know, southern Georgia or northern Georgia or I'm not going to southern Ohio. Uh, Are they declining to accept these assignments? Are you able to do that in the military and say, I'm not going? 
You oh. can to a certain extent. Uh-huh. Um, of course, it's a lot easier when you're higher in rank because you um, basically have a little bit more respect there and also a little bit more pull. Those that I'm worried about are the junior enlisted soldiers, um, those that are E4, even E5 and below that don't uh-huh. have the connections or don't have the pull sure. to actually have have the say on how they are concerned about their family, where the priorities lie. That's uh-huh. what I get uh, concerned when I see that. Um, they said one of the survey um, points, it's some 42 percent of active duty troops of color had concerns about racism at certain bases and surrounding communities. And so they reject the assignments before they even move because they tell you, okay, you're hooked up at this location. You can have a a chance to decline, but usually after that first chance, the second choice you have to go with. I see. Um, Yeah, the policies do change service to service and even division and division at times that that happens. And I imagine if you have a wife and kids, they may take that into consideration a bit more than if you're just, you know, single soldier uh, assigned yeah. to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was yeah. stationed at uh, Fort uh, Polk, Louisiana, and I ran into quite a bit mm-hmm. myself in 68, 68. Um, yeah, you know, it, because if you're an E4, corporal, whatever, uh, or a buck sergeant, E5, you don't have as much pull as, say, a sergeant first class as you do. Uh, but they're running into this racism. And, you know, I, I would think that in today's, the way that it's, the country's so divided now, it's probably more prevalent yes. now uh, in the last four years than it was previously, maybe, or now. Uh, I, also, I, I also have to give it to social media. Social media has really been there to um, show what has really been happening. Everybody has a camera and a video recorder on mm. their phones, so that can really come out so everybody can see the truth there. Um, let's see, there's another uh, point that came out it was about one in three active duty service members report experiencing threats or harassment from local or military police in the last two years. Mm-hmm. One in three black family members of active duty personnel reported being socially, excuse me, racially profiled by police. And so there's a few things that I remember of there was a lieutenant that had um, they were he was at Fort Eustis, Virginia, the cops mm-hmm. um had put on the lights to get him to turn o- uh, to turn off um, so they can talk to him. The lieutenant decided he it was a very dark, not well-lit uh, road, so he decided to drive another mile down to get to a gas station where there was light. And the uh, police officers reacted very aggressively and violently towards this service member. It was all recorded on... Um, uh, I believe they actually got it on their dash cam, uh, the, the cameras that the police have mm-hmm. and a few other um, instances. And those police officers got in big trouble about it. But those things do happen. Well, yeah, that one officer got fired. Uh, the one yes. who was really acting because uh, the, the, the lieutenant pulled into a lighted area, I think a gas station, because mm-hmm. he wouldn't stop immediately. And uh, they treated him with great disrespect. And the one cop did get yes. fired. He did lose his job. Uh, yeah, yeah and, but these are things that go on. It doesn't matter that you have a uniform on. Uh, it doesn't no. matter, <laughs> you know, if you, you've got uh, black skin. Uh, that seems to be <laughs> the deciding factor there in, in, yes. in respect to the way some people are, are being treated. And I'm happy to hear that the armies in, in the armed services are, becoming, uh, are getting sensitive to this and aware that mm-hmm. this, this does exist. Um, it's uh, it's something that's it's shameful, and it's it's happened in the history of this country. Uh, soldiers yeah. returning uh, from World War One, World War Two, Korea, Vietnam. Uh, it's it's happened, and and I'm glad that you know social media has helped so much in so many ways in, in our society. Yeah. So what do yeah. you do um, in, in particular? You uh, work with the legislative uh, veterans' legislative voice. So yes, yeah. so the veteran legislative voice, mm-hmm. I pretty much created it as a one-stop shop for anyone to, if they want to help advocate and make change in what's going on in their lives or their service members, who they support, whoever, how they can contact their Congress people, how to understand uh, congressional bills, what congressional bills should have priority over others. Um, those type of things I, I try to focus on to get the information out for people to understand how to make a chance 
or make a change in their lives and other people's lives. A lot of times with people in service, they have very little power to do anything, especially Mm -hmm. because, you know, the majority of the armed services is actually E4 and below the people that have the least amount of power at all. And so they are used to being property of Uncle Sam. And they are typically uh, told that very commonly. And so um, they don't realize how much power they can have as a constituent. You can call up your service, uh, your uh, congressional uh, officials, give them a call, tell them what you are concerned about, let them know. There's a few things, a few instances for great examples. Um, I usually try to tell people about the Sandy Hook shooting when they had put out the congressional bill of uh, for the um, for the gun bans for the assault weapons. And this very red congressional person had um, had of his interns and his staff tally up all the people that wanted him to vote for it and and who not to vote for it. Mm. So he can figure out the yay or nay for that congressional bill. And because one person said no, uh, excuse me, that they want that bill to pass, uh, then he went for that one person. The one versus they, how many were on the other side? One versus uh, yeah, hundred. Hundred. The thing is oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. But that one person explained the reasoning because they go to school. They see that how vulnerable they can be. How certain instances can happen. Um, so there was another service member that just came out in the news when he had went into Texas and went into the church and um, shot a lot of people back in 2018, I believe. Sure. Uh, The Air Force is supposed to pay out millions of dollars because they did not discharge him correctly, Mm -hmm. which would have restricted him to have the weapon. Right, right. Yeah, He actually legally purchased. So how does one get in touch with you? Because I certainly have some ideas. I, you, you know, some of the businesses in these in these communities uh, discriminate. I, I remember when I was at Fort Polk, I was not allowed to go into a club in 1968, mm-hmm. even though I was leaving for Vietnam in 30 days. They would not let me in. Mm-hmm. They didn't let black folks in. And so, um, you know, they, the Army, the, the, the military needs to, to look at even some of those businesses in the community and let them know that um, or we shouldn't be able to patronize them. If, uh, if yeah. they discriminate. Um, and yeah. then you said even some and of the MPs are, are uh, discriminating. Yes. Uh, when I was in Fort Eustis, same base as that lieutenant, um, we I was in a group with a bunch of other soldiers. And I believe actually like four of us in the car were white and then one black guy. Mm-hmm. The one black guy had to take off his hat, take off his glasses and give the give the MP his uh, mm-hmm. ID. Mm-hmm. No one else didn't ask anyone else in the car. What year was but this? That one black person. This was in two thousand six. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, still it, it's high real. to the war. Still pretty recent. Yeah, compared to a lot of other things. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, so. How does one get in touch with you, or if they want to uh, suggest some legislation? Do you have people who write the legislation for your organization? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I uh, I have a website. It's vets, V-E-T-S, mm-hmm. legislativevoice.org. I have a little part there um, on how to contact, what to say when you want to contact your congressperson. I do highly recommend calling over email or snail mail because it takes mm-hmm. months for them to go through the, the email even. And uh, when you do call, you uh, everything when you call uh, email and snail mail, everything is res- registered in one database oh. that's operated by the Capitol. So they know who contacts, why they contact everything uh, in there. And so it's all saved for your information and for their information as well. Um, and then on Facebook, Instagram and uh, Twitter, Veterans Legislative Voice. I have all those social media books there, too. And this is Stephanie uh, Calata, K-A-L-O-T-A, is in Pina Calata. I think that's with a D, though, but uh, Calata. Uh, (laughs) Yes. But that's great. um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, the article that we, well, the subject that we're talking about, our article just came out uh, on Chicago Crusader. It's on their website. Uh, So uh, check it out and so that they can go ahead and access that. The Chicago Crusader? Yes, the, the Chicago Crusader. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, this is something that is so uh, terribly important. And, you know, we've made some strides in the military from uh, being a segregated uh, military to uh, un unsegregated or desegregated uh, military, but there's still a lot of racism uh, that happens, and it happens on many levels uh, from the surrounding communities uh, to within the military, of course, and mm -hmm. even promotions and things of that nature. Or, or uh, you know, I, my incident, I was with three white guys and myself, and we were all going to the club, and they told me I couldn't get in. And, um, of course, they could, and they, they left with me, but um, it was, you know, degrading experience. Uh, of course, that was 1968. Uh, you'd hope things would have changed by now. But as you said, in, even in 2006, uh, the military police, was that person reported, that military uh, police officer, I wonder? No, uh, we, we were, all of us were too scared to do that. Yeah. We were all there for a uh, reclass and with the active duty. Uh -huh. um, and so we were actually more worried that we would be stuck there on the base and couldn't transfer back yeah. to wherever we were supposed to go. Yeah. What, so we rank, didn't what rank were you then? There. What rank? What rank were yeah. you then? Uh, I, was, I was a PFC at the oh, time. Okay. We, yeah. <laughs> there was a few specialists, and I think there was one sergeant with us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't have a lot of pull when you're uh, E5, no. E5, E5 and below, and that's Buck Sergeant down to uh, PF uh, Specialist, which is E4, uh, would be a corporal in the, in the uh, Marine Corps. Um, and, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, uh, yeah, we, we moved up the ranks. I was, I was just a Buck Sergeant when I got out, but uh, uh, Sergeant First Class. Well, that's great work that you're doing, and how successful have you been with uh, changing some of the legislation? And, and well, how does that I work? Mean, you, you send it to do you, do you send it to your uh, your congressperson, your senator, and your rep uh, representative? Yes. Okay, I see. Well, you have your representative for your district, and then you uh -huh. have two senators per state. Right. Um, and then for anyone that are in the locations that don't have a representative or senator, like the Virgin Islands, uh, Samoa, those locations, mm -hmm. Puerto, Rico, Puerto Rico, they yeah. can still contact their delegates and those delegates yeah, they're non can introduce delegates. bills yeah um, they can they, they can uh they can introduce bills they can co-sponsor bills they can actually make a little bit of change for them too so don't uh be disheartened because you're in a territory or a location that uh doesn't have a representative or a senator right yeah there are 435 representatives and 100 senators mm -hmm. of course two for each each of the states uh, each of the 50 states um so that's a lot of people for 435 um uh, but yeah. you know send your you know get proactive uh folks and mm -hmm. I, I think that this is uh great what you're doing and uh are you in illinois here you're in chicago no, no, oh. sir. I'm actually oh. from Flo I'm born and raised in Florida. I've been oh. to been in the South most of my life, but I've been a little bit everywhere. Oh, okay. um, and I actually used to work for the 416 uh, and Theater Engineer Command, which is in Darien. So I have been to oh. Illinois okay. a good handful of times. Okay. Um, yes, yeah. and my is because of what I have gone through in my military ever since. Uh, Honestly, since the sexual harassment, sexual assault congressional hearings in 2013, I have been uh, tracking uh, mm -hmm. congressional things that have mm -hmm. been going on that could make change in my life. And that's pretty much one of the things that I keep going with. Um, one of the most successful things, I mean, I don't I won't claim full credit on it's uh, the Brandon Act that mm -hmm. had been attached to the NDA that had been approved. The Brandon Act is something that if a service member wants to seek mental health treatment, they ask for the Brandon Act. And it's just like the Miranda rights, mm. they're supposed to be protected for that. So nothing should happen to them negatively to their career if they seek mental health treatment through the Brandon Act. Oh, that's great. That, when did that, when was mm -hmm. that enacted? Um, when the NDA was approved, which I believe was just before uh, the new year. Oh, okay. Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. Well, things can't, you know, people need to be encouraged because you can make a difference and you certainly can change uh, even the sexual harassment and, and some of the uh, uh, conduct of some of the superior soldiers to women in particular. 
Uh, yes, it's, and it's, it's been changed. It, we've made a lot of progress in the last uh, two years, which is great. And um, having people educated and understanding of what's going on and contacting your Congress people to let them know what's really happening, where right. you're at, is so vital. One of my favorite um, TV shows is West Wing, and there was a spot that no one could actually name the current price of milk and the old, because they were so <laughs> far apart from the general population and what that life is about. Mm-hmm. They couldn't remember a simple thing that yeah. most everyday people can remember. Sure. So that, it's a very true thing, and it happens. And those Congress people do value the um, outside story, and so they do take that to heart. Yeah, they need uh, input. I remember uh, we've had presidents in there, and they, they had no idea what was going on on, on the outside or how much things yeah. cost, or I won't name any presidents, but I could. Uh, but it's it's uh, so terribly important, and you can make a difference. And you are obviously making a, a difference, because some people thinking, you know, GI, government issue, and, you you know, you belong to the government. But you, yeah. can, you can, you know, you're a person, you're an individual, you have rights, and certainly, um, uh, you know, call your congressman if you have a problem. Call your senator. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, uh, and great. they can they can help make change and uh, make a, a lot of difference. And I mean, sexual harassment is now a federal crime for UCMJ for the military. That's a huge improvement. So oh. um, there, there's a lot of things that we can do, and helping with the racism that's going in the military mm-hmm. really should be the next priority to help sure. um, protect our service members and their families. Yeah, uniform code of military justice. Um, mm-hmm. Now, you're still being tried. These people are still being tried by the military, like for a sexual harassment case. These are all kept within the military. When you're trying yeah. someone, someone has been accused. Yeah, okay. So they'd be court martial and, uh, and still be heard by a military tribunal. Okay. Well, Stephanie, yeah. as oh. always, oh. what a fantastic job she does, uh, Ernesto. Does she? Yeah. Yes, and yeah. I'm so we're so pleased and proud and very blessed to have her as a partner because yeah. Stephanie talks about issues that some uh, entities would not want to discuss. Mm. She, we break eggshells yes. because, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because, because we can't make a difference if we don't talk about it right truthfully oh, yeah. carry a big yeah. stick yeah carry a big stick yes you do and, girl and, yes you and do and know you have the power absolutely you have the absolutely. power to make a change absolutely so stephanie as always thank you for a great show